So in this video, we're looking at integration by recognition. Uh, now, this tricks students up, but it's actually really formulaic. All the questions always look the same. You just kind of have to run through the steps. So integration by recognition relies on the fact that derivatives and integrals are opposites. If you find the derivative of something, and then you find the integral of your answer, you'll go back to where you started from. And that's what integration by recognition relies upon. So I'm just going to jump into a question. You'll see how this works. It always starts the same way. f of x is some function. There it is. Part a. Show that f dash x equals 2x on x squared plus 1. Well, that's pretty straightforward because we have a rule for that. So f dash of x is going to be equal to the derivative of whatever's in the brackets, in this case, 2x, and over whatever's in the brackets. So it's really just a one step up. We could have done it with some chain rule stuff, but that's it. Done. That's part A done. Now, part B, hence, find an integral of x on x squared plus 1. Now, when I say all the questions are the same, they really are all the same. You're going to see um, the words show that, and you're going to have to do a derivative. And then usually you have like a hence. Hence means using the previous information, you should now be able to solve this. So. If the derivative of that is that, that means the integral of that is that. And that's what we rely upon here. So the first step here is to rewrite what you've just done, but as an integral. So we can say that the integral of the thing we just found, 2x on x squared plus 1, is going, uh, with respect to x, is going to be equal to whatever we started with ln x squared plus 1. Okay, and now's where you have to start thinking. This is really the first time you've got to start actually thinking about what you're doing. So what I've written here is that the integral of 2x on x squared plus 1 is equal to that. But part b doesn't ask me for, to find the integral of that. It asks me to find the integral of that. So ask yourself the question, how can I make this integral look like the integral I'm actually supposed to be finding. Um, if I got rid of that 2, I'd be in business. So I'm going to take that 2 and move it outside of the integral. So now I have 2 times the integral of, and when that 2 comes out, I'm left with just x over x squared plus 1 with respect to x is equal to ln x squared plus 1. So I didn't really do anything. I've just brought the 2 outside of the integral. Okay, so I can say that 2 times the integral of that, which is the thing I was asked to find in the first place, is equal to that. The last step here is to remove the 2 from that side so that all I'm left with is the thing that I was originally trying to find in the first place. So to remove the 2, I'm just going to multiply both sides by 1 half or divide both sides by 2. Same deal. Uh, so now I have integral of x on x squared plus 1 uh, with respect to x is equal to 1 half ln x squared plus 1. Okay, uh, I'm really done here, I guess. Um, I should probably have some plus c somewhere. Yeah, let's put a plus c here. So the integral of 2x on x squared plus 1 with respect to x is equal to that. But it's also equal to a whole bunch of other ones, plus 1, plus 2, plus 3. So plus c there. And of course, that's going to put a plus c there. And that's going to put a plus c there. Now, if you're really thinking about things, you might say, well, hang on. Here, I've multiplied the side by a half. So shouldn't um, it this be c over 2 now? Uh, yeah, I guess. But c is an arbitrary constant anyway. So dividing c by 2 is just going to create a new variable that we call c1 if we wanted to. So uh, it's really not affected by that. Just the definition of c changes from this line to this line. Um, okay, that is the integration by recognition. The steps don't really change. There is just a little bit of like funkiness here and there. All right, so here's another example. Uh, you can see I've been able to just rub things out and start again because the questions always look the same. Let f of x equal cos x on sine x. Show that f dash x equals negative 1 on sine squared x. That's part A. And then part B will be, hence, find the integral of 1 on sine squared x with respect to x. Okay, so how am I going to find uh, the derivative of that? 
So I'm going to do f dash x. And then uh, it looks like it's probably like a quotient rule style question. <clears throat> so I'm just going to try to go through that really fast. Um, you know how to do the quotient rule already. All right, so um, that's pretty much it so far. We just need to get rid of this bit here. So you should remember your Pythagorean identity. Uh, sine squared x plus cos squared x is equal to 1. So finishing this off, we have negative 1 over sine squared x. All right, so we've done part A. We've shown that the derivative of cos x over sine x is negative 1 on sine squared x. Um, from here, again, it's pretty straightforward. We can now say that the integral of the thing we just found is equal to the thing we started with. Cos x over sine x. Um, and then a plus c on the end. So uh, from here, we need to look at the integral we've got and then look at the hence find integral we want. And the only issue is that this is negative instead of positive. So if I pull that negative out the front, I'll have a positive one instead. Uh, this will stay the same for a second. Um, and then I just need to multiply both sides by negative 1 or divide both sides by negative 1, whatever. But that negative is going to go from here to here. Uh, and I'll get negative cos x over sine x plus c. Or that negative can come out the front of the fraction, whatever. Um, okay, sorry about the white shirt. That's it. That's integration by recognition. You can feel from those examples that they're essentially the same steps over and over again. Find the derivative, let the derivative be an integral, and then do some puzzling to make that look like that.